Total War Warhammer came out in May of 2016, bringing us Warhammer Fantasy Battles on a scale that hadn't been seen since games like Mark of Chaos and Shadow of the Horned Rat. In those six years, a lot has happened to the game. DLCs, new entries, mods, community requests, everything. One of the more subtle improvements over those years has been the user interface, and that is no different in Total War Warhammer 3 coming out this February. There have been so many little small shifts to make the game more accessible or to make the game easier for veterans to consume the information they need to continue rampaging through the lands as any of the new legendary lords coming at launch. In this video today, I want to document and show off a lot of those UI changes. We'll be using the Mighty Scar brand, the Exiled Bloodthirster of Corn, on turn 33. Now, I won't be showing off a ton of gameplay here because, again, I want to try and keep this as spoiler-free as possible, but I'll mainly be going through menus, showing off the changes on the campaign map, character scrolls, provinces, battle map, and just pretty much everything. You can quickly navigate to any portion of the video you like using the chapters linked in the timeline and the description. Also, keep in mind that the game is still in development, and any numbers on any stats you see are subject to change up to the launch of the game in a month. Just Kind of wanted to slap that disclaimer on the video up front. Before we get started, if you have not yet pre-ordered Warhammer 3 and intend on buying the game, you can support the channel by using the link to my Nexus store. Nexus provides Steam keys directly from the developer and I get a cut of every sale, significantly help keep the, helping keep the channel alive. Lastly, if you end up enjoying the content, please don't forget to like, comment, or subscribe. I cannot tell you how much it helps out. Let's get started here on the UI improvements guide for Warhammer 3. Okay, so the first subject I wanna tackle is the overall campaign map and a lot of the UI changes in this portion of the game. So we're going to be using Scarbrand, like I've said, and look at him looking like an absolute unit here in the Northern Wastes. Uh, I'll be honest, he is such a fun playthrough. I'm absolutely loving him. Let's go over some stuff. So just kind of looking over here at the Fortress of the Damned. And let me just apologize also real quick. You will notice some frames dropping here and there. I don't think the campaign map has been fully optimized yet. Things are still in development. So just wanted to apologize for that if you notice any stuttering or stammering. Not with my speech. That's going to happen regardless, but with the game itself. So looking at the Fortress of the Damned, when we hover over it, we get the same things we always get, right? Income control, um, corruption, uh, what's going up, what's going down, as well as the garrison, the strategic objective, its overall climate, and its uh, resources, if there's any. But what I do like now is right where it says Fortress of the Damned, of course you get your build icon, which is, you know, we know that one. But it's colored. It's no longer just a generic scroll. It now is colored green, red, gray if it's neutral. Well, I guess gray and neutral are kind of, these two are kind of very similar, but this is ruined and this is neutral and they're very similar looking in color. Um, red if it's an enemy, green if it's yours, um, blue if it's an ally. So you can kind of just at a glance look and see exactly what's going on a little bit better than you could in Warhammer 2. Um, it did have the same coloration, but not quite as vibrant as it does here in Warhammer 3, which I really, really enjoy. Also, looking at the overall campaign map, it is colored very dynamically. And right now, I don't have a whole bunch of stuff revealed in this campaign, but if you've seen my Cathay playthroughs and streams, uh, you'll have noticed, or I'm sorry, not my Cathay playthrough, uh, my uh, Demon Prince playthrough or my Cathay playthroughs coming this weekend, uh, you'll notice that the map is very colored. It's almost like you're playing Crusader Kings, which has very high contrast differences from territory to territory, which I do really like. When you've played Warhammer 1 and 2, it's been a more of a muted color tone, almost like an, a 50% opacity overlay on that region, where sometimes the, the colors can kind of blend. I now have a pretty clear-cut idea of where these locations are on the map, and I like that quite a bit. Another really nice thing that you get just from contextual clues is by looking at the Palace of Ruin here, I can see that that's fortified. Um, in the past, there would be parapets on this scroll if it was fortified. This is just a little bit more of an obvious indication that this is a fortified location versus this one, uh, versus this one, which is not a fortified location, which I just really like. I like that kind of nice contextual clue. Now, looking around the rest of the UI before we jump back into some more settlement stuff, uh, you can see some other fun tips here. So looking at Scarbrand the Exiled, hovering over this, I can see that he is spreading control, increased by one, and he's spreading corruption, increased by five. But what's causing that? Is it the overall Lord's uh, bonuses right now? Well, let's click on Scarbrand. 
Nope, it's not, because he gets training because of one of his heroes, and he gets increased mobility. What's nice is I can click this. Oh, and I know, oh cool, it's this Blood Reaper that's giving me that ability. And I can click this. Cool, it's this Cultist of Corn that's giving me that ability. I really like this, is just kind of get a good idea of where the hell all these effects are coming from. And even moreover, I don't remember if this is in uh, Warhammer 1 or 2, but I like the ability to just press this button. I can quickly see what my cultist has active. I, I just, I really, really like that as far as a um, nice way to just kind of dive in on the hero that you have in question. So some other things here across the map that I want to talk about are across this screen are in the upper right corner. So we have the, the map right here. We can just toggle on and off. But in addition, we can layer it with events, lords and heroes, provinces, and known factions. And a lot of this already existed in Warhammer 2. But I just like the way that this can all just be kind of truncated all the way down very nicely, very neatly. It's in one location, and it's done and over with. Like, having the map this visible is really nice, I think, in my opinion. Um, so... That kind of goes over a lot of the general UI stuff. These things in the top here are going to be specific to the lore than what you're doing and everything like that. And they're always going to be very clear cut and simple now, like taking a look at this. Oh, here's the skull throne. It gives me all this information. Here's my skulls and here's all the information. We've had these things for some time, but it's nicely done here in Warhammer 3 and it has a matching UI, of course, that matches each and every legendary lord. Now, jumping into some provincial stuff. And the little frames drop there. Let's... Okay, you seem very adamant about that. Taking a look here at the actual province, the Northern Wastes, we have a lot of information just offhand. So let's look at a lot of these cool things. So we know, of course, fortified wall strength, that's always been there. But now when you see gold is here, or marble is here, you, just, you used to have to go to that location to see that the marble thing was on the scroll or next to the name scroll. Now it's cool to see it here rather than having to jump into the building browser and find that unique um, resource, whatever it is. Also, you can have auto-construct building. When checked, buildings will automatically construct at the end of your turn should funds allow. The allocated budget can be set through the favor summary panel. Right-click to open the favor summary, summary panel so you can do... All this here, auto construction budget, I can just do 100% of my budget goes to that, whatever I want to do. So I really like this. There's a lot more nuance to that. And uh, honestly, a lot of people will look at that and go, well, why would I ever use that? Well, when you have a massive empire, you just you don't want to spend every turn managing everything that's increasing in growth and managing everything's control, stuff like that. It's nice that you can just simply press this when your empire gets too big. And on the notion of control, let's swing over here now to growth and control it's a lot more succinct and a lot easier to get an idea of how your population growth is going okay i know exactly where this is when i'm at population one i can see how much that bar is going to be filled up next turn and it's going to take me three turns to complete that bar to give me another piece of uh, growth from their population also we get this going here as well we, we've already had this in Warhammer 2 uh, and 1, of course, but it just didn't feel as nice and easy to understand as it does here in 3. Same thing with Control 2. We get each kind of bracket of Control broken down here and by individual blips, and each one telling us... Did it say triggered? Oh, I thought it said triggered. I'm like, whoa, that's weird. Tightened, <laughs> strong, and then absolute, and it tells us that level of control and what it gets us, what it nets us. Of course, you get your provincial effects, which has always been there. And of course, too, you get your um, uh, commandments or whatever they're called. Uh, yeah, commandment? Yeah, commandment. So that is a nice little treat here when it comes to overall management of this. And I, and I do like that a lot. Um, same thing here, too. You can also have um, movement notifications turned on here. You've got all of your, your typical standard fare when it comes to managing your army. Uh, it is nice to see that you can you can now see your oh where it is winds of magic power reserve from this menu which is cool. Uh, also you get your upkeep which you've always had as well as any uh, active abilities which again you've always had. But just kind of going over those really quick to show them off one more time. So you get quite a bit, quite a bit more information now. But it's also done very neatly and it's done in a way that is uh, super easy to just gobble up from just looking at the menus like when it comes to objectives which is i think the last thing we're going to go over before we jump into uh, research and other stuff uh objectives are very well done too because i can just pin these objectives 
over to the right side and hover over them to find out what that objective is as well as its rewards. I fucking love this because now I don't have to keep checking through stuff. I don't have to try to remember it. And you're going to get a ton of objectives. Warhammer 3 is riddled with quests and tons of other little minor things to get you going in the beginning portions of any campaign. Um, not just simply Scarban or any of the other ones you've seen so far. Every single one of them has a lot of these early quests to get you going. Also, victory conditions are in here as well for the uh, long and short here. Uh, but it's just overall a very nice and easy way to get an idea of what's going on. And I really like it. And you can also just press this, abort the mission if you so wish. And you also have a movie, movie viewer if you want to view any of the uh, m movies you've seen up to this point. And lastly, before we move into uh, characters and skills details, we get technology. And we've already had this search button, but I think it's just important to, to highlight one more time. Let's say I want to really focus on Chaos Warriors. I'm going to type that in here. And you can't tell because some of them I've already um, researched, but this Rage Within is pulsing because it will apply to Chaos Warriors. If I scroll over here, oh my god, there's no other ones that apply to Chaos Warriors. That's just that's just Hornswoggle. Hounds of War, Flesh Hounds of War, we'll type in Blood Letters. There we go. So if we just kind of look over, haha, -ha, this one's going to be for blood letters. That'll be for blood letters. So uh, take note of this because we're about to talk about it again when it comes to skills. We've got all these things right here. Very nice to take a look at when it comes to technology. Let's move over now to skills, skill details, and the character scroll. And this might be my favorite screen in the game as far as overall improvements to the UI. And look at Girthopotamus Rex there, right? Looking all sweet and hot, Scarbrand. So we get a lot of new information here, right? So we have our magic items, we have any of our ancillaries, just everything is very neatly put into columns, categories, everything. So we can just jump to whatever we need, magic items. Now we have an overall pool for everything and I can see where it's equipped. Oh, Scarbrand, Scarbrand, my Blood Reaper, another Scarbrand thing. So it's nice to just kind of have everything in this overall list rather than clicking through every single one of my characters to try and find what item is on who and place it onto whatever character I need to. And it's also nice to see which ones can or cannot be placed on certain characters, right? Like if I look at, I'll we'll show that in a sec, but if I look at other characters, certain ones can't actually have specific amounts, which is, or I'm sorry, specific items, which is very easy to kind of just click through and see. You can sort things, which is nice too choose descending or ascending by just clicking that okay sending it uh, doing it by rarity ascending and descent so we have the option just to kind of turn that on and off but a new system has been added in for any time you just get a ton of crap items in the latter portions of the game so let's take a look over here at the glittering scales and the gambler's armor i can click these two buttons and i can fuse them together fusing the selected magic items will produce a new item of higher rarity so let's just go ahead and do this for the sake of the uh, yeah it'll little unequipped but for the sake of the video we'll do it and we got the fencer's blades so you fuse two items of the same quality to get a random item of any type of the quality above it so two armors made this weapon just by happenstance but let's just say you know what I, I don't even need that either like that's just crap for sure well I can now salvage it and get some favor so it's nice if you have just a whole ton of them they're a whole mismatching they are so far down on the totem pole like they're uncommon I'm not even going to bother trying to bring them all the way up to rare well i'm just going to salvage a whole ton of them we'll just go click 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 and you can salvage them just like that here we'll just do the one we made and boom it's gone you just get a, a quick little shot of money so it is nice that you can just do that now also you can save the character save this character in order to use it in custom battles so if you have it uh decked out a certain way with uh items and skills and whatnot you can save it and import it in a custom battle to fight with friends or to say hey you know what i want to kind of do a, a mock-up battle of how this character would perform or, or try certain combinations and try and see how it perform in a custom battle uh, it's really fun for testing in my opinion so a lot of cool stuff there now of course we get the character stats as we have always had nothing new has really changed there just kind of difference in overall color but we have this new tab called abilities and you probably saw this when we did the um the the survival battle back in like may of 2020 or whenever we did that but this shows us any active abilities any passive abilities and any resistances it's now been categorized uh, according to whatever it is a passive active or resistance in the ability section and the nice thing here is yep got it that's also reflected on the actual uh 
army screen. So if you look at things on any unit, it's the same thing. It's not just simply in that character scroll. So you can always see stats and abilities by simply pressing those buttons, which is quite nice. I will jump back to there. I guess it's also worth noting too on the army scroll, we can now see the tier. It's a little bit more obvious what entity and unit size there is gives you an idea of their mass indication as well, which is really cool to see that. But we'll jump into that more on the actual battlefield. So let's go ahead and jump back into these character details. So abilities are here, shows that are active and passive rather than having to, rather than doing this. All right, let me try and, where, where did, uh, oh, okay, there's the physical resistance. Press the button, find it, cool, easy. Also, details, traits, and effects. All that is uh, listed here as always. It's always been there, but this just kind of puts it in one big, long, neat scroll rather than kind of siloing it in a whole separate portion of the menu system, right? You'd, you'd have to click back over to this different one. It would be on this one portion. It'd be over here, so on and so forth. So you can see that all right here. And it's quite nice. And the embargo states we we're, we're, cannot show you anything past turn 50, but I know a lot of people will want to see this. It happened on turn 30 something. There you go. That's what happens when you defeat Inkari. Some people will want to know that, so there you go. Um, but also, let's go into skills real quick. So skills, again, everything here for the most part is pretty much the same. Nothing overly new in this screen, except for two things. One, we can auto-assign skill points. Just click that, go ahead and do it. That might have been in Warhammer 2, I just can't remember it, but still, it's a great way if you have a much larger empire, you have a ton of heroes you just don't want to manage because they're there either just for their passive effect, or you've already made them into an assassin and anything after that point you just don't care about, press auto-assign, it takes care of it every time they level up, you don't have to deal with it. But also, the search bar here too, the same one that was in the, uh, the has been in research for ages, is now present. So, type in blood letters again. And I'm going to be able to, oops, did I spell that wrong? Chaos Warriors. We can focus on, oh no, I'm sorry, it's different on this. Let's go uh, melee attack. Well, oh, I swear to God I have got many college, collegiate degrees that dictate I can spell, but clearly not right now. So this shows us, hey, this is going to give us a bonus to melee attack. This is going to give us a bonus to melee attack for our uh, bloodthirsters. So pretty much anything that says melee attack in its actual uh, skill is going to start glowing for us. Thick skin, well, that's missile resistance. Let's type in, let's just type in resistance. I, I wonder how that works. Yeah, they're just going to show us any resistance boof boosting ability. This is physical, that's missile, that's spell. So it's just a really great way to say, well, you know what? I'm going to really do a lot of raiding. Oh, okay, well, just spoilers is my rating one, you know? So it's just kind of cool to be able to do this. Scarbrand doesn't have a ton of skills, but you'll find that a lot of the other characters do have a heap of skills. So it is nice to be able to do that. Lastly, we've got the quest button, which just shows us any kind of quest item that we would get. Prior to this, remember, it would be here in the skills portion, but now it's just in its own tab. A quest battle for this item will be issued at rank 10, and you can see all the stats of it, which are quite nice. Just kind of puts everything again in a much neater format to understand exactly which quest battles are coming your way and which special items. Lastly, another great thing is this. I don't have to press this button to pop through everyone. I can just press up here and do that. And as people level up, it'll just show me a little up arrow. So once this starts to fill with more and more and more heroes and lords, I can just simply click this to anyone that has a little tiny up arrow and jump into them and do whatever I want. Then swap their mounts out, whatever it is I want to do. So it's a much better and easier format for navigating through all of your, um, uh, your, your characters as your campaign grows. So one thing before we actually move over to the battle stuff is uh, two things that I forgot to mention. And one is uh, if I click on my Demon Prince, who is conveniently named after me, and hover over a enemy force, I get an idea of how that balance of power is. I get an idea of what their constant effects are and what their army roster is just by hovering over it. You get a lot more of a context clue of what's going on by hovering over, by hovering over things now by just anything. It doesn't ne simply need to be um, two conflicting things like that. You can just simply look at the land. It shows me the winds of magic and the corruption in the location. It just overall is a much better uh, feel. Now, one other thing too is the ability for you to see this difference in the actual movement trail. So if I hold down right click, you see it's the typical green. 
go beyond that, it goes red, it goes blue, all the kind of different colors. But if I go off into the water, it becomes a neon color. Um, this will also change, I think, when I jump into attrition. I've noticed attrition will sometimes have a little attrition symbol and a glowing trail. But for the most part, you get this difference when you're going to be making that jump into different land like that, which I do like. Some sort of visual context clue as to what's going on, which is quite nice. So as we jump into an actual battle, I wanted to show the pre-battle screen to give you guys an idea of anything that might have changed there. And again, we get some pretty good indicators. For the most part, this screen is pretty unchanged. Things have just gotten different in size, a little bit more information, like we have the Winds of Magic Power Reserve here and anything that might be affecting it, and over here as well for uh, Inkari. Um, stuff, for the most part, in the center here, very much the same. We get the turns that they can remain until um, attrition kicks in. Now we get their defensive supplies, which will help out. We've talked about this in our video on the siege rework, so you can see that there and how this affects things. Um, the total labor force we've got, labor force available for turn, stuff like that. Again, what we can make. Everything pretty much standard fare. This stuff has just gotten larger buttons to denote, you know, of course, hey, you can continue or fight the battle, stuff like that. Um, and circle would be a different option here if I had just arrived to this location. Um, but also the auto resolve, if it will kill any troops. Okay, mine, none of these will die. If it can kill any troops, just like it was added in Warhammer 2, they'll glow red denoting, hey, you know, these guys are about to die. Um, looking over here on the left side of the screen, the banners portion has gotten a little bit larger, kind of showing off that these banners can be placed on who. And if you hover over them, it shows they're, where they're glowing on each individual unit. Like you can see here, the banner of Hellfire is present on Scarbrand. It is glowing. But now when you look at reinforcements, it says reinforcements arrival time is a minute 58. So remember, Reinforcements are not immediate, and Lightning Strike does not does not remove reinforcements. It delays the time in which they can come or come onto the battlefield. So, just wanted to show this off before we jump into an actual battle to talk about any kind of UI changes there. Okay, so loading into an actual battle, we have some other really fun UI changes that I think are pretty crucial here. So. Let's go ahead and take a look. We have a nice little cafe and army assembled before us. And one of the big things that they've done now is the ability to kind of set this all up quickly. So let's just go ahead and do some real quick changes here. We're gonna put our, okay, calm down. Uh, we'll do that and this. Just kind of set up a nice front line how I want it. Now we're gonna select all this and I'm just gonna right click. So it'll automatically set things to its formation style of missile in front or melee in front. It, by default, it goes melee in front, Stand just like that. And that makes it so a little bit easier if you, as a new player, don't know what the hell is going on. You tech, grab everything, press right click. It's all pretty much set and easy and ready to go. Also, there's a new button here called Formation Attack. This unit will try to stay in formation when in melee, so it won't try to pull itself out all willy-nilly. This is different than Guard. It's saying pretty much that it'll kind of keep this same style of formation rather than just running off into the distance. Again, similar to Guard, but also different. Um, for Cathay, we get some things like the uh, Yin and Yang modifier, so Harmony above it. This is just like on the actual uh, battle or uh, campaign map where we saw the modifiers above our units. But it's nice here that you can just kind of have things very easily displayed because if I hold down space and press this button, we get even more options to take a look at. The status icons, which we've had before in previous entries of Total War. The threat level, again, which has been in previous uh, entries of Total War. But now we have heroes and lord portraits. You can see where they are on the map a little bit easier. The type icons, which a lot of people like and a lot of people dislike. I think it's that they're a love-hate. I personally hate it, so I've turned it off. Uh, but a lot of the stuff that we've come to expect is there with some additional benefits here. So when I take a look at even the health gauge, it's denoted with three little hashes on it showing 25% incrementation, so divided by four basically. And there are lazy health bars now, meaning if I were to take a huge splash a portion of damage, let's just say um, a spell hit here and it did a, a chunk of damage, it would show me a grayed out portion of the health bar and the health bar slowly sliding away kind of denoting how much total damage have been done to this so let's just say boom 25 percent damage hit this guy well then i'm going to see a little coloration difference from this 25 percent indicator down to 75 and it's going to just show that kind of slowly slide into 75 percent showing me that massive sweep against the um 
the health of that unit. So it's a little bit easier to kind of get a good idea of what's going on, which I really like. Um, also too, like I said, I organized these things and by simply just right clicking, it popped into the formation I wanted. Prior to this, you'd have to organize it here, put it into a, a thing, then uh, put it into a unit, then do all this other stuff, lock it and all this other things. If you look, I pretty much just highlighted it and said, okay, formation, melee front, boom, and it did it. So it's a lot easier to set up. It's a lot more, um, or a lot easier to approach, less obtrusive in my opinion. Um, now, moving over to the actual unit card here. We'll take a look here at the Celestial Dragon Bros. That's looking sweet. Um, and we, lo we looked over this pretty briefly before, but for the most part, everything is very much the same. We get the new unit tier here. We get everything else, though. Just nothing's really different. Uh, it is nice to know the mass, so to get a good idea of, hey, you know, this unit has this many units in it, and this equals this much mass. It's a small entity, so on and so forth. So it's a little bit nicer to see here. The differentiation, too, between large and small entity is much different. Take, for example, Jade Warrior Halberd, that's a small entity. Grand Cannon is a large entity, so it's just a much better indication. I like it a lot more. And that same abilities thing that we had in the character scroll is present here as well, just to get a good idea of what's going on. Look at Miao Ying, we can see... Hey, look at Miao Ying, damn it. There we go, we can see her abilities, her spells, her passives, her resistances, everything. Just a lot more of an easy way to digest all this information. Now I'm going to go ahead and press start battle here. I'm going to pause because we've got more things to talk about. So what you can see at a glance is a lot going on. Um, if you scroll down, you can probably get a better idea of what's going in. So looking just at the unit cards, I now know what is idle. There's just little tiny Z's on there. It's sleeping. It's getting a little nappy poo. So it's much easier to get an idea of what units aren't doing shit on the battlefield, which is so crucial to me. Also, if I go ahead and unpause this, there it goes. All the shields are entering. I now know, and we've seen this before, what units are bracing and what units are getting advantage of, say, stuff like their harmony, like their yin and yang harmony here. There are other units in the game, like uh, take, for example, Blood Crushers. When they get 75 kills, they get a bonus and they don't get that bonus until it's active. And as soon as that bonus hits, their banner starts to like light on fire. So there are a lot more visual context clues as to what's going on on the battlefield that make it a lot easier to get an idea of what's going on, like at a glance. Like if I kind of just stay over here and I unpause, we should start to see their, their special ability kick in. Go ahead and do that. Wait a little bit. Might start to glow. It, it might have already kind of hit. Jade Warrior. Oh, okay. Oh, crap. The cannon's good. <laughs> I didn't expect the cannon to go off. Well, what I was trying to illustrate is this. The uh, Cathayans have their defensive stance. And after 10 seconds, it'll push into its second phase. And it makes a visual glow when that happens, telling me that they're getting a further charge resistance and more armor. Also, on that note, you can notice that next to the name, you have persistent battle effects that are present on any unit. We've shown this off in the Siege video where we talked about the Siege Defender or the Siege Attacker momentum bonuses. It's all illustrated right there. We'll click over to Miao Ying. She doesn't have any going right now. Oh, yeah, she does. There we go. Remember, Arcane Conduit is no longer an activatable. It just increases your power recharge. So you get just a lot better idea or sense of what's going on. And if you are kind of new to what's going on too, you probably have not seen this. But the battle right now is going... Let's just... I'm going to fast forward it for the sake of this... Or what's, what's, the, what's the key? Alt-1? Okay. okay. It's going super fast. I press Alt-1 to cast a spell or use an ability. It slows the game down to slow-mo so I can use this ability. Let's go, what is this, is an offensive ability? Okay, I don't think I'm in range. Oh, okay, I am. And then as soon as it's cast, it goes back to the speed that it was at, which I love. I love that that's how that works, how it's actually going to just go ahead and slow the game down for you. I want to pause that again. didn't want it to unpause and go at fast pace. So you get, again, too, a better, way better visual. Like this whole little mist above the banner has been in the game since Warhammer 1, but it's just way more evident now this time around in Warhammer 3. I get a really good idea of what the hell's going on. Man, these pink whores, they got to have something going on, right? Or uh, these pink whores over here. It sounds like I'm saying whores, but I swear to God, it's horrors. Um, you, just, you get a better idea of, of all that's happening. Now, another little big thing here, too, is with spellcasting, and we have that uh, represented by this new hourglass. So this shows us our power, which is the uh, the 
bottom portion of this hourglass and the top portion is our power reserve. So one power is dropping into that bottom portion every seven seconds and we're getting arcane conduit, which is increasing that uh, recharge modifier here. So let's look at just casting any of these spells. So we've got seven power right now, right? Well, that's going to drain us down to zero because that's going to cost exactly 14 power. Did I say 17? We have 14 power. <laughs> this is going to cost us exactly 14. Or this one right here, it's going to cost us 10, so it drains us down to 4. can't see it's being blocked, but again, it's just nice that it just kind of shows you that exp that quick indication. You don't have to do the math or anything like that. It just goes, oh, okay, oh, okay, I'm not going to have any after I've, I use this ability. Cool. Or maybe double-clicking it. I can't currently, cannot currently afford overcast. So it's just nice that you get a lot of this information here. It's easy to kind of digest and easy to get, a, get an idea of where everything is going on the battlefield. And everything else for the most part is the same, but these are a lot of the big standout things I did want to point out here for you guys. Also, the map is obscenely large. You can see, I, I had that large for uh, the Siege video, but everything else though, for the most part is, like I said, just pretty much the same. You can, you also can know what things are firing and getting shot at are on fire, but those things have always been in the game. And two, also, if you are playing a Zinch, it shows you your, your Protoss barrier above your health. Uh, it's, you've got your, uh, your Vigor, your Ammo, your Health, and your Protoss barrier. So, uh, the Balance Power Bar, nothing new there. But again, this is pretty much everything for the Battle UI. One last thing I want to dive in on here is just the overall game menu. It is now way different. Just moving through every single thing is just way more you know, cinematic. It looks really cool. It feels very fun. I really enjoy what, how it is just kind of quickly swipes through everything. Oh, nope. Gotta go back here, go there, and just kind of jump into everything else. And everything else. Yeah, you know those guys. All sorts of fun, easy kind of... Uh, menu navigation and it's the same when you look at the actual campaign map or when you're in the actual game and you want to look at the menu and just to show off what that looks like I press escape and it gives me already some information on our faction so if you're brand new to the game easy to digest information there as well as some quick key bindings like what your quick save and quick load abilities are here and then just jump through all the things that you would normally go through so just a much nicer and easier better UI UX when it comes to the UI as a whole and at that, it brings our video here to a close. So this hopefully gives you a better idea of a lot of the UI improvements and UX improvements that have that are coming with Total War Warhammer 3. Now, we did not go over any of the diplomacy stuff because I've covered that in its entirety in a video that I put up just a couple days ago. You can find that link in the upper right corner in the diplomacy video. I guess for the sake of continuity, though, here is the diplomacy menu. You can see... Things look very much the same. You just now have a whole bunch of different stuff with war coordination, with your any kind of allies you've got, and you can trade settlements. So, and also you got the quick deals button. That's just kind of like the the quick spark notes version of some of the things that have changed with the diplomacy screen. But I hope this again helps you out in getting a better idea of how Total War Warhammer 3 is changing the game. If you have any other questions, anything that I maybe glossed over that you noticed that I that you want to know more about, go ahead and let me know in the comment section below. Like maybe this button over here, which I didn't touch, but here you go. Now you can see how it looks and what it does, but this is nothing new here. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. Don't forget to comment, like, and or subscribe. But again, let me know if you have any questions. More than happy to help out. Have a good one and take care.